in motion is Sewell. Goff to throw. Wants to throw it to Sewell. Oh, he oh, caught it. Boy, yes. Sewell on a first down. Oh, yes. the big man dives down to the 31 yard line. Oh, that is beautiful. Welcome to the 20 in the Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft, and I am very happy to welcome in former Lion safety Glover Quinn. Glove, man, you look like you can still play a little bit here. You're keeping <laughs> yourself pretty fit, man. Uh, try to, man. You know, that was one of the things that I always said, that I don't want to be one of those guys that 10 years after they played a five or whatever, they look at you and was like, bro, you never played football, or bro, you wasn't a defensive back. You, 300 pounds, How are you, you know what I'm saying? Because you see those guys all the time that go from smaller guys when they're playing and they, they finish playing and they gain so much weight. So, you know, I, I go through phases and um, now I'm kind of in my workout phase <laughs> right now. You're in your big now. phase right now. This is, this What's is crazy your big is phase. I was, t- I was telling some guys <laughs> earlier today, I'm like 30 pounds heavier than I was when I played. I was going to say, you're like a box safety now. Yeah, yeah, I'm a linebacker right now. I mean, I'm probably... <laughs> I mean, I'm like 245. I got on the scale today. I was 245. So I'm Man. like a I'm like a Mike linebacker in the NFL. It's good crazy. for you. How are the kids doing? They're doing good. They're yeah. Doing well. Busy. Um, busy. I mean, we're doing football, basketball, baseball. My youngest son wanted to do soccer, and he just fell in love with soccer. Like just okay. out, of, out of nowhere, fell in love with soccer. Really? Fell in love with Cristiano Ronaldo. Just watches like soccer every day. I took him to a camp this summer. And they fell in love with him. They wanted him to play on the club team. Now we playing club select soccer. Like, okay. And he's never played. Hey, and I like it though. But he's he's good. Hey, that sport needs more athletes. You know and, what I'm saying? And, and it needs and, more guys that maybe play football, basketball, something else, you know, and get into into soccer. And that's right. how we grow this thing. And, and, I, and I believe that, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of how kids are brought up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you're an athlete, because I feel like you know, I grew up playing football and basketball, but I truly believe if I would have learned how to play baseball at a young age, I believe I could have went to the major leagues. That's just what I feel. If I had played golf, as because I feel like I could play all those sports yeah. now, but I play football at a professional level, mm-hmm. right? So with my kids, I'm like, you guys are athletes. You guys are athletes. You're athletic. You're you are that. You need to learn. We're gonna teach. I'm gonna teach you how to play at a young age. So I started them in baseball. Yeah. And now they're phenomenal at baseball. I'm like, you know how to play football. Yeah. You grow up around football. We, right. we can get to football. Um, but they kind of they kind of do it all. And so yeah. we're in this soccer and it's fun. I love it. My son plays baseball. And when he's playing baseball, he wants to be a major league baseball player. And that's what he's all about. And then when it's hockey season, he puts the bat away, picks up the hockey stick, and he wants to play in the NHL. And, you know, I love the fact that of kids playing multiple sports, doing multiple things. Mm-hmm. I think it's great for him. So it sounds like you're enjoying retirement, but it, it's not full retirement. Now, I hear you've got a nice little kind of side business going. You are getting pretty good as a photographer, and you do your own framing as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we it, talked about this before, and, and, and I have this, to tell you, I've been, <laughs> Glover, like, you guys know Glover, right? From <laughs> years he lit up when we started talking about that you're you're into this you know i i love it and i tell people all the time honestly outside of the physical nature of football i kind of get the same fulfillment from playing football because football was a job to me that's kind of how i looked at it Mm -hmm. and so when you put in hours of studying hours of training, hours of rehab, prehab, sleeping. You put all that preparation into going out and playing well on Sunday. So when you go out and you play well on Sunday, it feels great because you know everything that went into it and you went out and performed well. So when you get a project from somebody that they want to get this piece frame something is memorable to them right this means something to somebody yeah and when they give it to you they trust you to like it's going to be the centerpiece somewhere right it's going to be a conversation piece you know when you look at it and think about ideas of what to do talk with them go over different ideas 
kind of get a plan and then now you got to execute that you got to get the stuff you got to get this done you got to make sure it's right you got to and like when everything comes together yeah. and you pick it up and it's like man that looks that looks, <laughs> that looks fly and then you give it to them and they're so excited and you see the excitement on their face it's such a cool thing man so yeah i started doing custom framing and i mean i frame all types of stuff jerseys Pictures. Is that, is that moment just as good as a NFL interception? You know, it's it, NFL interception is probably nicer. <laughs> but a few more eyes on you, right? But it feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to the heart, to the heart, it feels good because the NFL interception is so much like physical emotion that you feel at the time. You know right. what I'm saying? But when you sit back at the core of it, like. Once you go home and you get out of the arena with 80,000 people screaming and your teammates hitting you and all these different things and you kind of just script it down. It's like, dog, I saw that play happening last all week in film. I saw it. I, I felt it. Dog, when the quarterback looked, it just looked so open to me. And so you start thinking about it's pure, pure form. Yeah. And to the heart, it feels good, right? 100%. And so with those frames, when you sit back and just think about, man, like, that came together nicely. And it's pure form. It's <laughs> yeah. Like, man, that feels good. I love good. it, man. And so it's cool. That's awesome. Good for you. But you are in Allen Park. You took in practice. And you were part of the alternate broadcast for the first preseason game. So I want to pick your brain a little bit about what you saw from that game, what jumped out to you. Put your analyst hat on a little bit. You did a great job in that broadcast, by the way. You have That's a knack. Fun. You have a knack for this, too. But maybe three things. Um, and it's a preseason. Obviously, you've been through it. Starters don't play. But maybe three things that jumped out to you about about the preseason game number one. Well, I mean, if the the atmosphere for one. Yeah. You know, um, for it to be a preseason game, the atmosphere, the the the, the Lions fans are excited. Um, they're going to show up, and I think the team. I think last year the expectations were high, and. I think they were just talking in terms, maybe a little immature, right? Far as this, I think going through that last year, accurate. learning how to win and what it takes, not going through a whole off season. This year, the expectations are high, but I think it looks like they're ready to handle that. Yeah. Um, it looks like they're they're ready to handle that portion of it. Um, I mean, Jameer Gibbs, is somebody that I liked in college. Mm. And then when the Lions drafted him, I was like, oh, wow. And the way he moves, you can see it in the first preseason game. I mean, they they, they rolled him hard in, in one drive, getting him carries. And if he can stay healthy, he's going to give that offense uh, a different burst. Yeah. Um, you know, Jamison, I like him. Um, I think he got some – Great, great, great ability. I saw him drop a, a pass that I really would have wanted to see him yeah, catch. The deep one. Um, because that's your role, right? right? When you're the speed guy, you're the guy that opens up so many things for an Amon Ross St. Brown, right? You're the guy that opens up so much because you're going to take two guys, right? You got to be that guy that they feel like we can't have a DB one-on-one -on -one with him mm -hmm. down the field. Not because he's going to run past us, but just because he's going to go up and make a tough catch, right? If they don't feel like you can go up and make a tough catch, then they're going to trust that guy one-on-one. -on -one. They just, hey, just plan for the deep route. If yeah. they throw it up, be more physical. So he, he, he has to be more physical. Because you can't run past everybody, right? right. You're gonna have to make tough catches. So I would I would have loved to to see that. And I mean, just watching the guys on defense, they was flying around. Um, I, I I like I like the the secondary that I'm seeing. Yeah, I, I think they got some oh, playmakers we're get into in that then, a little bit too. And then I like you know you know Dre Bly, who's the corners coach. He mm -hmm. was a he was a ball hog, right? So when you're a ball hog, you're gonna teach those things. You're gonna emphasize those things every day. And so that's gonna become hopefully part of what they're doing and turnovers start happening. The more turnovers you get, obviously you give your offense more chance. I'm glad you mentioned the turnovers because you led this league in interceptions one year. They get a guy in CJ Gardner Johnson who led it last year. Just having a guy like that, a ball hawk, a safety who 
can get his hands on footballs, create those game-changing plays. Just how, how big is that for a defense? What, what, what kind of a difference maker is a guy like that? I mean, that's huge. I mean, that's that's huge because, I mean, these offenses nowadays are so, so good. You know what I'm saying? And the more opportunities you give them to score, eventually they're going to cash it in. The more you can take the ball away from them and give it to your offense, you're going to have a higher success rate than – they let the other team have the ball. Yeah. So anybody, anytime you got guys that you feel like can turn the ball over, for one, turnovers become infectious. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Once you start turning the ball over, everybody wants to get a part of it, right? Yeah. Everybody starts turning the ball over, punching the ball, like catching interceptions. So, I mean, we used to say turnovers are contagious, right? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Once you get one, it's like, boom, it's like another one, another yeah. one, another one, right? And so having a guy like that, that can get the ball, um, bring some some attitude, some swagger. Um, he was out there today. He made some big plays out there today. Um, he's talking a lot of noise. And we know he does and, that. You know, yeah. that, that's good. As long as, you, long as you can back it up, like, go, go and play. Um, and so uh, I'm excited to see what they do at the safety position. They got a lot of guys in that safety room. Mm -hmm. It's a crowded safety uh, backfield. Kirby's another guy like um, that. You saw the four interceptions as a rookie, a guy yeah. that can – you make plays, get his hands on footballs too. Now you got two guys two like guys that. Back there. It's, you know, when when, um, when you were playing in uh, uh, went to Seattle, why is it like Quandre? Thank you. I mean, that was two guys that could get their hands on right. footballs and right. make plays back there. And it looks like that's kind of developing again yeah. here. And I then would agree. you had a guy like Cam, and then. Branch, who's come in the second round pick out of Alabama, guy mm -hmm. who played that star position at Alabama, right? Mm -hmm. 90 plus tackles, 14 tackles for lost multiple interceptions, mm -hmm. right? Playmaking plays, right, right. Love? Right. And so the combination of all that and branches look great. Just what's your expectations for the secondary as a whole with, with all the pieces brought in? And then you get a guy like Cam and and you know, Jerry I mean, was was good last year. I like I like what I've seen. I like what I've seen so far. Um, I had practice today and, you know, a little bit of that soft of the game. I, I, I expect those guys and, and that group that they're going against right now in Jacksonville, they got a good receiving group. That's I mean, a great receiver they, core with Kirk they, and Jones yeah, and, and and Kevin Riley's yeah. back in the fold and they I mean they they and I thought they held up today. You know, they gave up a big pass, I think, and and one of the team drills, but I thought for the most part they held up for for a practice. And I liked the what I saw pre practice mm -hmm. right the the guys out there working on technique working on different skills working on catching the ball like i like those things because it carries over it carries over you know what i'm saying i used to have a coach and used to always say like you know in in the heat of the moment you do not rise to the occasion you know you sink to the level of your training hmm. so the amount of work and the training that you put in that's what you're going to do yeah. on game days. You're not going to get in the game and just turn into a Superman. It's right. just not going to happen. So those guys are out there training their body, training their hands, and training their their minds to make plays. And if they continue to do that, I think we'll see uh, a pretty good secondary that that you know gives you gives you defensively a chance to stay in the game. The expectations for this team, you talked about it a little bit, you know, 50,000 people for the preseason, obviously NFC North favorites, Vegas has got them at what, nine and a half. I mean, there's real excitement here. Do you feel it outside of Detroit, even from a national perspective? Yeah, you do. You do. And, and you know, you know, doing the hard knocks is a, is a big thing, right? You yeah. know, you, you, you don't, I mean, you, sometimes you get tired of all of the cameras and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, it shows the world your team and kind of how you are and how you do things. And so a lot of times, you know, a lot of people in America fall in love with stories. They like stories, they like this, they like that. So then you become somebody that they like. So now going into last year, the 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 expectations were high coming off a of train, training camp and hard knocks and everybody want to see you. And then you didn't start the way you wanted to start, but you finished it strong. And so people can say, hey, that, those guys finished that thing strong. I mean, to go to Green Bay that last game in a game that didn't benefit them because, you know, we had already got put out, 
But to go and beat Green Bay in that game, when if Green Bay wins, they make it to the playoffs. Right. Like that's a huge game on national TV, right? On national TV, so it's the prime time game. So to go out there and do that, that that gives you a lot of good momentum going into the off season. I thought they had a really good off season with some of the draft picks and and free agent guys they picked up, and so. I, I think they're ready for the expectation this year. I think I think they're ready to handle it, and I think they'll have a good year. Well, you're a busy man. You're in great shape. You've got father duties, sports duties. you got framing duties. And if Fry Laugh Friday was any indication, you could have a future in some broadcasting <laughs> too. So stay busy, man. You're doing it all. It sounds like you're having a great time with life. Thank you so much for coming by, joining me. I know everybody out there loves hearing from you. Anytime you're in town, you are always welcome on this podcast. Appreciate you, Glover. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Welcome back to the 20 in the Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft. I'm very happy to welcome in new Detroit Lions starting outside corner, Cam Sutton. Cam, two weeks into camp, how's camp been treating you? Um, it's been it's been ecstatic, you know. Um, first of all, just the energy, just uh, to overall necessarily um, part- participation on all ends, you know, keeping guys healthy, you know, all the fans coming out. You know, that's been a great sight to see the consistency of that. Um, and it's just our approach um, throughout the work days, you know what I mean? Just getting after each other, um, being able to, you know, uh, infuse that into the joint practices. That's something new to me as well. Um, just to being able to, to see somebody early, yeah. especially in camp like that outside of just on the game day. Um, it's been really good work for us. Um, and just for us, our overall just uh, team capacity, just being able to gel, being able to co- uh, continue to see the game together and, um, you know, just keep playing for one another. So uh, I think we're kind of just fine tuning that obviously right now. And I'm just letting that carry us throughout the days and lead us into the season. You know, those joint practices as a starter, I mean, you're getting 30, 40 reps sometimes in practice against mm-hmm. looks you haven't seen in a controlled environment. Yep. You know, I know that's why coaches love it. Do you love that part of it better than do you get more out of the joint practice than you do even a, a preseason game that you might play maybe a half back in the day? Or I, something I, like that? I, I think so. Uh, just over to seeing being able to see things, obviously, throughout the week. You know, um, you know, you do so much of game planning just on a normal day to day basis of game planning throughout the week and then obviously the final product on game day. But obviously you're getting to see those new things throughout the week. So you're able to iron out, you know, the the good and the bad, yeah. you know, and um, just move that down from not just one position, but across the whole board, you know, offense, defense and special teams. And then um, just how that all affects the games is being able to be situationally aware. Um, being able to, you know, uh, down in, down out, diagnose, you know, the situation and what's going on out there on the field. And then, uh, you know, just capitalizing and just uh, just honing in and not making a lot of mental errors, um, just being really clean in our game and our technique. You know, some days we, we, we kind of teeter off with, you know, maybe the, 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 the thudding or the pads and the impact. And then some days, obviously, we're live go and, and full go. And then obviously, when you see another color, when you see another team, it's like <laughs> you just see it red, man. Yeah. So, um, you know, and it, like I said, you, you're, it's, it's monitored and controlled in that as well. Uh, you know, it's obviously out here healthy competition, you know, but it gets chippy and just ready to get after it. It gets a little chippy. For and sure. usually one of the guys in the center of all that chippiness <laughs> is CJ Carter Johnson. Uh-huh. And just the energy that he brings, Cam, um, to, to that secondary, to this team, to mm-hmm. that defense, is it infectious? For sure. You know, uh, that's you got to play with high energy. You know, you got to create your own energy. Um, and you know, that's like I said, that's just your approach. Mm-hmm. You know, that's your mindset every time you step out on the field. Um, it's not never a arrogance or a cocky as just like I'm here I'm energized I'm ready to go I'm fired up you know I mean I got my brothers with me and this is this is my job this is what this is what I love to do this is what necessarily um you know I've been bred to do and uh you know we just appreciate what we do we really love what we do um so it, you know it comes off different from different guys yeah you know sometimes you hear more than others than than than, than other guys you know what I mean but uh everybody has that tune everybody has that switch where they kind of click out every now and then and yeah. uh, you know that energy comes off but uh like I say it's cont- it's contagious as well you know and uh, we all feed off of that we all feed off of you know one guy's success and one guy making play and um just the hunger to, to be able to hunt together yeah. you know I, and I think that's just more the more like I said the jail keeps kind of solidifying itself you know we're we're finding we're fine tuning our, ide- our, our excuse me we're fine fine tuning our identity and um you know like I said we're just ready to 
to really just see another color. What man. do you want that identity to be in the secondary? Because I've noticed from the outside looking in, just watching through 15 practices now, mm-hmm. more hands on footballs, more balls on the ground, more turnovers. I mean, you look at you had a fumble recovery yesterday, get up, pop out. CJ mm-hmm. caused it. CJ had an interception today. It just seems like more generating kind of more of those big plays. But what do you want the MO to be for that secondary when it's said and done? Yeah, um, just for the secondary standpoint, uh, one thing you talk about is just physicality, little man hitting. So that's a part of the game. Little man yeah, hitting. Yeah, like man. That. So, you know, you got your big guys. <laughs> you know, you got your big guys up front. They say second level. But, you know, when you got, you know, secondary guys, you know, turning the ball back, you know what I mean, stopping the ball, no no yards at the contact, obviously making plays on the ball, that's affectious in itself. Yeah. You know, that's that's something that's not portrayed or seen from necessarily smaller guys or, right. you know what I mean, DVs. But it can um, make such a big impact. 100%. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we love. We love contact we love getting around the ball um and then just obviously the the being the ad- advantageous kind of situations uh for us to do that you yeah. know being able to see the ball being able to you know vice tackle and and, and get to the guys you know on early downs or just w- in, uh, down and down out in general and uh like i said just being fast physical and free you know no me's communication communication is just on a high on a high level um and it's never just a dull moment out there on the field you know like i said just keeping that energy and that spirit high Fast, physical, and free. That sounds like a shirt. Hey, man. Here. <laughs> here. Hey, man. Like I said, just, just build on that eye identity. Just build on it. I, I, you know, you were in Pittsburgh, obviously, to, to start your, your career and, and for a while. I'm just curious how you're adjusting to a new situation here, a new defense. It seems like you're settling in really nice yeah. in, into that into that unit. For sure. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is obviously just, um, just appreciating the days, you know, um, you know, some days are obviously more better than others. <laughs> you know what I mean, and that's the growing pain. You yeah. know, who's who's you can't fight you can't fight or, or shy away from. You know what I mean, the the growth within obviously a new situation. And uh, like I said, the more that we keep coming together, the more we keep spending time together. They kind of been able to help me flush that all out. And uh, like I said, just set up my feet in a little bit. You know, even within the scheme. You know, just being able to see the game the same way. Um, to, like I said, to to eliminate the the mishaps that happen out yeah. on the field. You know, some things are going to happen. Some things are going to, you know, go, you know, based upon coverage or whatever happens out there on the field. And obviously offenses and teams get paid to make plays and stuff too. You know what I mean? But our job is to obviously defend the ball, you know, not give up explosives. Like again, a little man hitting, being physical, flying around and obviously make plays on the ball. So have you seen this defense evolve? You know, speaking of the front seven too, now oh, you've yeah. got to see it again oh, in yeah. four joint practices, oh, you know, yeah. and that's a, a pretty good look. That's a good tapes load. Mm-hmm. What do you like about the defensive unit as a whole maybe what's one thing you guys need to can maybe sure up a little bit or you'd like to see it, continued improvement for the next two yeah weeks. just a, there's just an individual continued growth mm. you know um, everybody has something to work on in their game you know and just fine tuning you know so just being that consistent player uh, rep in rep out day in day out you know um, just understanding your job no 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 mental, mental errors and and not being uh, not being aligned in the right spot you know not having the, the pre-communication the post communication like those little small things that we have to keep keep building on and and let that kind of f- flush itself out as, yeah. as it goes you know that's something that shouldn't be happening especially going into week one and then obviously on later later down into the season we shouldn't have the same problems we should be finding new problems necessarily week in week out or day in day out what's so, jumped out that you'd like as far as the the whole defense, uh, all eleven guys, what you've seen from that in team periods, what, what's maybe something Man. that jumps out? What, 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 we got, we got a lot of guys. We got a lot of guys that can that cause a lot, of, wreck a lot of havoc, man. We got a lot That's of guys. That, here. We got a lot of guys that can wreck a lot of havoc, man. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, we, it's hard. It's hard not punishing your brothers. <laughs> it's, it's hard not hitting your brothers all the time. And, you know, um, obviously that just comes with the, you know, the the new age of just being protected. You know what sure. I mean? And um, but at the same time, you got to get your own physical reps too, and prepare yourself too, and, and your style of play and how you're going to play too, and be able to Dan, finish. Dan has a good mix of that. Yes, you know, he does. Being a former player, oh, yeah. being a guy who's now been on both sides, it oh, seems yeah. like he's got a really good understanding of that. You guys have to appreciate that. Probably. For sure, for sure. I mean, he he, he always has our best interests. You yeah. know, all our coaches do. You know, there, there's never something that they're not going to put us in the right position or the right situation for us to, you know, not succeed, let alone, you know, to put our bodies in a bad situation as well. So um, they've done a great job of as I said, protecting all the guys, yeah. not just the selective guys, just literally the whole team. And I think that's why as a whole, we're, we've been pretty pretty healthy for the most, in, uh, for, for sure. <laughs> we've been pretty healthy and, and continue that same health, man, that same health and blessings, man. Um, 
And, that, and like I say, you appreciate that as a player, just uh, having that support behind you. 100%. And then uh, obviously just of trusting them as well. You know, so it's, it's a give and take in that as well, just a player and a coach relationship. One guy I want to ask you about before we before I let you go here. I know you got meetings, you got a busy day going That's on. Good. I appreciate you taking the time sitting here after practice. Team signs. CJ Gardner Johnson to be their nickel cornerback. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of his role. And then this kid, Brian Branch, comes in mm -hmm. and it's starting to be like, wow, you, you can't really take him off the field. And so, you know, CJ moves back to safety. Just what you've seen from Brian early on and maybe take mm -hmm. him back to, to your, you know, first camp in here and how yeah. maybe things are spinning. And, and it seems like, you know, that kid's handling all pretty well, making plays and, and looks like he's going to be a nice part of that secondary for you. Yeah, um, you just talk about smart and tough players smart and tough um just uh id you know just individuals um you know he, he gets it you know and it means something to him you know and uh you know just he, he's a, just kind of that 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 full epitome kind of just a, a player you know what i mean just what you want um just a, of a detail just of a presence of you know what i mean just having your mind in the right spot um he's got all the he's got all the physical attributes that you would need as a player and then just of position flexibility that just helps him that him out you know it's going to help yeah. him out in his career you know for a long time as well as just all the guys that we have in the secondary I mean, we have, guys cj can we do got so Trace many guys can do oh, we got things. Some, you every, can play inside outside everybody yeah. you know what i mean so like i said just just being continue to be a moving target you know mm. it's it's hard when you you, you can't line up and just you say you have 11 guys and you're just going to play the left side and the right side of the field every week. You know what I mean? And that gives offenses just as much to look at and, and game you plan around. You can start to match up against For sure. Guys. You know, yeah. different looks, matchups. You could play man zones. I mean, that's just where the game is going today. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you've seen so much for offenses is just how they challenge defenses with, you know, certain looks. Uh, certain guys on the move or just being in different positions to create matchups and things like that. So, you know, that's a back and forth chess match of, you know, how do we, how do we get the guys in here who can, you know, execute the scheme, but at the same time match up and do the things that we want to do and have, a, uh, have the position flexibility as well. Well, Cam, it seems like you guys are certainly more prepared to do that to opposing offenses. It's been fun to watch you guys as a secondary develop, as a defense develop, more hands on footballs, more balls on the ground. If you haven't been out to these joint practices, they've been given Jacksonville and New York Giants <laughs> offense yeah, all we don't, we don't they can handle it. we don't need to talk about it it's all good it's all like they safe. can handle though so we'll get it, ready to put the product out it, it's it's gonna be fun it's been exciting i know lions fans are exciting thanks for joining me i appreciate you and good luck the next two weeks and go give kansas city hell appreciate you much love <laughs> fun pride baby